Our speaker today is Lizzie Van. She's a British-born social entrepreneur and music fan who lives in Woodstock. She's a res resolutely independent businesswoman with many talents, commercial smarts and experience. She's an environmentalist, author, developer, and now a theater and studio owner. In 2006, she created the pure organic baby food brand called Organics. As a result, she was awarded the member of the British Empire Medal by the Queen for her contributions to improving children's health. After she sold that business, she moved to Florida and developed an award-winning platinum certified zero energy, energy green village on Anna Maria Island in Florida. And then she came here and the rest is history. Because she was a fan of Janis Joplin, she was very interested in the Bearsville Theater. And when it came up for sale, she took the plunge and she will tell you that story. Lizzie. Well, what a great introduction. Thank you so much, Judy. And how nice to meet everybody. I hope you're all okay. Um, so how do I follow that? Well, um, I bought the Bearsville Center having not wanted to for a number of months. I'd seen it degenerate and, and fall into disrepair and then close and then go up for sale through an auction process. And I just didn't want to touch it. I had things going on in my life to do with my mom and dad and health. Um, but then eight days before the auction, I just drove past it and thought somebody's got to do something with this. And I had heard rumors about hotels and knocking it down and this and that. And I just thought, well, I probably could do it. So um, that was the starting point, And that was Labor Day weekend of 2019, which is, you know, a year and a half ago. And what a year and a half it has been. So I'm going to take you through a short presentation, hopefully. <laughs> OK. Um, I think we've covered that one. OK, so the, we took the whole thing through a very intensive renovation process because although there were other buildings at Bearsville that were in a bad state, the theatre seemed the most important one to tackle first. Uh, that Labor Day weekend in 2019, the, it was raining and the water was pouring through the ceiling uh, into buckets, but there weren't enough buckets and it was coming down the roofs and, uh, sorry, down the walls and buckling the floor and oh, it's just in a mess. So we started there thinking that we would open at Easter last year. Uh, we renovated the walls. We hand sanded the underneath of the ceiling. We put a new roof on, we put gutters in. We trenched all the way around the building to divert the water table away from it. Uh, and I learned about the uh, amazing service of mold remediation, which I'd never heard of before, but, which is quite common in these parts where you take a building right back to its substructure. You take off the sheetrock and the ceilings and the floors and you dry it out and you spray it. And oh, it's a horrible process and a very expensive process because at the end of it, you rebuild everything, including the plumbing and the electrics and body blah. Anyway, and then you decorate it. So, um, we did this, it was uh, a small team of people. Uh, we kind of got to know each other really well. It went through the winter of 2019-20, which was darn cold um, and gave us a number of problems, um, but we wanted to open. And so we were gung ho to do this. And, uh, and then, you know, we had this party planned <laughs> and all sorts of things planned and then bingo, coronavirus came along and we were all like rabbit it's in the headlights and just going, ah, oh, now what do we do? So um, clearly we couldn't carry on. Um, we wanted to do something next. I'll show you where we got to. This is the mold remediation in the basement. These are the guys in their hazmat suits, obviously, um, getting down to the bare bones. And then on the right hand side is a the corridor that resulted from that, which is a celebration of Bearsville Records. Um, I owned the theatre and the Utopia building, the Little Bear, the Bear Can Cafe and the Peterson House and a couple of residences, but do not own the recording studios, which is now defunct. And I did. And Bearsville Records came and went um, in the 70s and 80s. But nonetheless, I think it's part of the Bearsville story. So we have shown the corridor there, all 81 albums that were released on that record label by Albert. Um, and... Um, 
it's all the old faithfuls. It's Todd Rundgren, Jesse Winchester, Paul Butterfield, Foghat. Foghat, which was not Albert's favorite uh, band, but which did make him the most money. And um, in fact, there's rumors that it was the Foghat money that built the theater. Uh, and Randy Van Warmer, uh, even Dolly Parton's sister Frida Parton was one of their, one of their artists. This is just showing how there's a new roof up there with new gutters. This is, that's what the theater looked like on the left the week after I bought it. We immediately got up there and started repairing the roof. And on the right, you can see it subsequent to that. So then um, the bathrooms. Now in the bathrooms, well, uh, what can I say really? <laughs> we started peeling up the corner of one of the walls because it looked a little damp and the baseboard heaters were rusty. And we found out that there had been a leak between the men's and the women's bathrooms for 30 years. Uh, and that was the reason that they didn't smell great and that everything was very wonky in there, both the um, stall doors and the floors and everything else in there. So like I say, we took it back to basics, roof, uh, the walls came down, uh, the plumbing came out and we rebuilt it. And what you can see on the right is the men's bathroom where we have celebrated some of our local musicians, Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, and of course, Levon Helm. Uh, and the women's bathroom is similar style, uh, but we have in there Cindy Cashdollar, Maria Muldor, Odetta and Kate Pearson, as well as Janice Joplin. Uh, this was the, the lounge when we were halfway through. So we hand sanded that uh, or, um, audio ceiling up there. That has 200 different speakers in there that are no longer connected. But um, it was a very important ceiling and we didn't want to lose it. So it was hand sanded. And when I say we, it was an amazing guy called Jesus Alarcon, who's from El Salvador and his team of six people that hand sanded this. They were such craftsmen, such artists in the way they handled it. They also sanded the floor and they sanded the walls. Anyway, you can see there that it was a kind of very basic sort of looking thing. And I, I used to hate that yellow paint because it reminded me of um, a school, you know, it's kind of institutional, an old fashioned school or a, an old fashioned hospital. So we tried to imagine what Albert would want. And just from the bare bones of it, it looked like a mid-century modern building from the 1950s. So we then made it look like this. Uh, and you're all very welcome to come in and sit in our lounge because um, we're very proud of it. So we use peacock blue, which is a typical color from that era, the pendant lights, those gold stars on the ceiling and some kind of 1950s style chairs and a painted bar. You can see all those colors on the bar are those mid-century modern colors. We put some gorgeous old musical instruments up on the shelf and we've created a little stage at the far end where there are spotlights on those uh, performers and all, all kinds of all kinds of nice touches in here. Uh, Kim put those stickers down on the floor at the beginning of coronavirus <laughs> so we could keep people apart and we also took out the how many tables did we have Kim was it about 20 tables? Yeah 20 plus yeah. 20 plus tables so uh, under coronavirus guidelines we're trying to keep it very open so that should you go in there as of now there can be 100 people inside the theatre it's very easy to stay away from. Then the auditorium was even more sad than the lounge. <laughs> the curtains, the drapes at the back were all um, tattered and torn and oh god it was just awful. The floor was nasty, the chairs were falling apart. Um, there was just nothing very nice in there. You know you can see from those big auditor, auditor, auditable pan panels on the side that it just was kind of falling apart. So we, we changed out the drapes, uh, we added peacock drapes to the side, peacock colored drapes, and we put in gold fringes, we added chandeliers, and there's in fact even another chandelier there now. And um, those gold men that are holding up those Art Deco flame lights on either side, we found those, or I found them in Florida in a junk shop and uh, brought them up here, found a wonderful couple, Frank and Lindsay Webster, who are, um, decorators, they, they do finishing work and they took them off my hands and brought them back looking like this, gold with beautiful finishes, looking very antique. And then we went out and found uh, there's a young woman called Gwen Siegel who does um, staging in houses and she 
found me those lamps. She found a lot of things. She found the, sh the chandeliers as well, a very important part of, important member of the team. And this is the team. So this is the team of people. You can see there plumbers, electricians, stone masons, carpenters, and then at the front, all the women. <laughs> we were the, the thinkers, I guess, the thinkers and creators there, and also my dog, Keith Richards. So um, we've in, I've invested two and a half million dollars at the purchase and then a further three and a half million dollars so far. And we're still counting. We see another a couple of million dollars that uh, we've now got to the end of the cash budget and we're now looking for borrowing. Um, the theater's running costs uh, have been what they, what they have to be, property tax and insurance and maintenance and utilities and just the people that we need there to run it. Uh, you can see there the income that we had last year and the income that we hope to have this year should we be able to open properly in the second half of the year. Um, the theatre used to have an income of about 800,000. So potentially we might be at a quarter of that this year. Uh, and this is how that income came in. You can see left to right, we go from 2012 over to 2021 on the right. So you can see that, you know, it was kind of hovering around and then suddenly it went up to 680,000 there, but there was other income coming in. I've never been quite able to understand this. There was another 120,000 income that was coming in that kind of you can't see in the accounts, which is interesting. Um, and then the expenditure was also going up. So this is expenditure divided into different categories. The green is the biggest and that's payroll. And the yellow is the running costs. And then what we call the talent <laughs> is the blue line at the bottom. So the talent was growing in the early part of the last decade. And then it's gone to nothing last year and a smaller amount, a small amount this year. And if you net one of those off against the other, you get this. So you can see why it went out of business. 2012, 2013, it made a small profit, you know, probably 25, 30,000. Then it made a loss of 40,000. Then it made a loss of over 100,000. And then it went out of business. Uh, and that, if I just take you back to some of these earlier slides, the bar was very important to Albert Grossman. He, this was where he wanted to do deals. This is, this is, he planned to do a lot of deals in here. It wasn't really for the public. And then the auditorium, in fact, you can see it better here, is very small uh, compared to the size of the stage. And that's again, because he wanted to put the music industry in the seats. So uh, record executives, radio stations. Uh, and then he wanted to put his artists who uh, in earlier years were Bob Dylan and Janis Joplin, later years, Todd Rundgren, also Peter, Paul and Mary, uh, the band, Richie Havens, uh, lo lots of very well-known national names. They were, the idea was that they would be on the stage and the music industry would be listening to them. And then, you know, the deal would be done. Um, but because of that, it's very hard to make the theatre work. And I also think that some of that loss is to do with those that missing money. It's a mystery. It's a total mystery to me and Kim. And then you can see that over here on the right hand side, we are well underwater because we're not bringing any income in. And yet we have all of our costs going out. So uh, we have future capital costs. We are going to resurface that grotty old car lot that looks like a truck stop. We're also going to expand it because Albert Grossman didn't go much for planning permissions. So the this town basically gave each of the buildings the minimum occupancy. And Kim in particular has um, kept the town very well informed about all of our work and, and had permits for everything. And they came in when we finished the theater and gave us much uh, increased occupancy. They also did the same for the restaurant, for the Bear Cafe that is now the Bear Cantina and the Peterson House. So we have to have more cars. We are going to have a car lot that um, increases by almost 100 cars and it is near 400 cars uh, as a capability. That's actually a nice facility for the town should it want to hold any event that brings a lot of people into town. People can be bussed backwards and forwards or um, even events can happen there. Uh, we are putting in outdoor lighting, which would be great. <laughs> Doesn't have any, or it had some and it all kind of went, stopped working. 
Uh, we have eight acres of woodland, which is in very bad shape. It's got old cars dumped in it and all sorts of things, but we are going to clean that out and make a memorial garden because everybody loves to know the history. And rather than having gravestones, we're going to mark up each of the trees in memory of um, somebody that's very important to Woodstock. So uh, at the moment, we would like to put mark a tree up for Jeremy Wilbur, who was the town supervisor and loved the music, and also Ted Orr, who was one of our local musicians who played last year at the theater and has sadly passed away, and others. Uh, we are going to expand the park at the back, what I call the grass, and I think it's called the Paul Seifert Park. We're going to double the size of that, going into the car lot for a bit of space and make that available for private parties as well as for um, just the public to enjoy. And that theatre, you'll probably remember when you've been in the bar, you can look out on the garden, but the, the park, but you can't actually get to it. You have to walk around. So we're going to open, open up a couple of those big windows and build a deck at the back. Uh, and make it a big space to celebrate. Uh, and of course, this is all pending the site plan review that Judy is a member of the planning board on. So we're hoping that we can make this happen ASAP. We'd really like to be uh, making these facilities available because I have to tell you that um, I think it was a week after I bought it, I went to the drum boogie in town at the, uh, the creation center and people would just come and hug me. I, I didn't know who they were. I, my, paper, my photo had been in the paper. And I think the Bearsville Centre means so much to the town. People were just relieved that something good was going to happen after those years of neglect. So um, it's a wonderful job. I don't call myself the owner. I call myself the steward of this property because I want to steward it through to the next generation and give the town what what... Um, Albert Grossman wanted it to have, which is a wonderful, important space for music and open it to the public. So uh, can we do that? Well, right now we're restricted to 100 people inside, including the staff and the performers, which means we can only sell 90 tickets or 200 people outside. Uh, but outside, we're not allowed to have music or um, alcoholic beverages pending the site plan review uh, and some agreements with the town. Uh, we are hoping for wider opening uh, on the 1st of July, but you know we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know if that's coming. We're just hoping that the increasing vaccination is going to make that possible. Uh, and next year we're projected to break even or even make a surplus. Uh, I guess this should probably be called a not-for-profit because I'm not sure we'll ever make very much money. We certainly want to put the money back into uh, local causes, but also into education. I, I would really like a big chunk of the Bearsville Centre to be focused on educating children in um, the art of music, but also bringing the profile of women in music up. Uh, I'm very pro-women, and uh, I would like there to be mentoring and workshops for women to come along and be inspired by people like Cindy Cashdollar, uh, Teresa Williams, um, Gail Ann Dorsey, Odetta, Janis Joplin, you know, all of the, the amazing women that have touched Bearsville over the years. So I want them to be inspired and we bring in people from the music industry to mentor them, to get them to know how to publish their music, how to promote it uh, these days. So finally, it's a women, a woman owned and women run business, Kim and I with a few other people. Uh, employment will rise from Kim and me and Robert Fraser <laughs> to over 30. Uh, the Lemus family is now running the Bear Cafe as the Bear Cantina. They are a wonderful uh, Hispanic family that were behind the counters at Catskill Pizza, uh, at Joshua's, at Sylvia's, at Sunfrost. Uh, they were um, in the kitchen. They were cutting things up and cooking things and then serving them, but they've never been front of house. So I hope you can support them because they're an amazing family. Uh, there's two brothers, a sister, a cousin, two cousins and an uncle working there. And then we have Nancy's Ice Cream Cafe um, owned by Nancy, uh, by Catherine Sparta. We have the Tavern opening on Memorial Weekend, we hope. A lot of work to do there for Kim and the new tenant there. And obviously that'll be serving Catskill um, drinks and Hudson Valley food. And we have an incubator space at Utopia where we have already a small recording studio the uh, Maxophone Studio, we have a, a music industry promoter in there. We've got an architect downstairs. Uh, we've got a biotech company in there. So um, 
and we, we got a lot of inquiries that's going to become a really great space and we're hoping that the revenue generated by all the businesses that uh, mine will be the theater and the utopia building but everything else is the other businesses um will be over four million dollars at some point maybe 2023 so um that's it from me i'm going to stop sharing the screen and i can take you back show you photographs if you like uh, there is a video on the um bearsvillecenter.com website on the home page and uh, you can see the inside of the building walking around. There are some wonderful spaces in there that we've, we've made the green room into a very spiritual room. We have uh, Hindu and Buddhist and Christian icons in there. And it's a, just a lovely space, a lovely calming space. The women's, uh, sorry, the larger dressing room is dedicated to Janis Joplin. And the smaller dressing room is, Janu is dedicated to Van Morrison because he wrote his wonderful album, Moon Dance living up on Spencer Road, looking out over the Ashokan Reservoir. And we have a gorgeous mural that I could try and find called Music Made in Woodstock with 84 different musicians on it, uh, all of whom made great music in Woodstock over the years. But I think just in conclusion, my, my dream is to make Bearsville as vibrant as it was in the 70s and 80s when there were lots of household name musicians in town. And I see no reason why there can't be that again. There are still some fantastic musicians and creative arts people in town. I meet new ones all the time. And I see no reason why we can't attract great musicians to come back and play at Bearsville, given its history and uh, get all that moving again. So that's me, Bum. Lizzie, Lizzie, this is Kristen. Um, we have, uh, if you're willing to take a few questions, some yes. have been put in the chat. Yes. Um, Myrna's interested in knowing if you've reconfigured the theater so the stage is more in the center. No, it's the same place that it always was. We've actually built it out a little during coronavirus because we wanted to be able to film from the sides and do live streams, but that, that will not last. It will, the stage will go back to where it was. Great, thank you. Um, a lot of people are putting in comments and thanking you for everything that you're doing and for being a, a great stewardess and uh, much appre appreciated. Um, Leslie's interested to know if anyone on the call has, um, have if anyone ha has any Albert Grossman stories. I can tell you one. <laughs> Thank you. We were doing that trenching around the back and uh -oh. uh, did it with a bucket. Uh, you know, just a, big, you know, a backhoe, that's right. And at some point the guys, uh, Steve Costello's guys went, oh, there's some concrete underground here. So they scraped away all the grass from this 35 feet long by 20 feet wide patch of concrete. And we found a big handle, didn't we, Kim? Just a huge yeah. handle that was stuck in the concrete. You were the first one in the hole. You were the first one in. <laughs> Possible to lift it without um, heavy equipment, but we did. Got a little ladder, went down into this basement, and uh, it was two rooms, very wet. The ceiling was about eight feet above the ground. Very wet and damp. And uh, I asked the architect, John Storick, afterwards, what was that? He said, well, you know, Albert liked to have places to store things. And he passed away before he could store things in there. So... Uh, that's just a, an interesting Albert's story. He seemed to like to squirrel things away quite a lot. Hmm. Um, Vicky's interested in knowing if there were, is going to be just music in the theater or will there be other arts as well? Oh, as much as we can take. I'd love to have dance there. Um, I'd love to have classical music. Uh, there's no reason why we can't have choirs singing in that space. And... Um, it's just, it's just a beautiful space. John Storick, the architect, told me that the roof, which is an old Dutch barn, you know, it's, it's like this. Uh, he walked into it and what these sound people do is they clap and they listen to see how it sounds. And he said, it's a perfect space uh, because the, the sound is reverbing. The, the roof is like a timpani drum. 
So it receives the sound and it vibrates a little and you hear it and then it, it dies. So you hear a very rich sound, but it doesn't kind of echo too long. So it's a great space for anything you really want to do. Uh, of course, with the Woodstock Film Festival, we show movies there and we may show more movies there in the future. And uh, we would like it to be available for private parties. I love dancing and I'm thinking we should have a dance party at least once a month with um, you know, reggae, country music. I don't know, you know, all the, all the different types of music that we could have, maybe salsa dancing, maybe ballroom dancing, you know. I don't know, it depends what the town really would like to see there. I remember it, Lizzie, as being particularly well handicapped accessible considering the kind of building it was. So I assume that that has not gone away. Yes, I think it's, it's still there and it's, it's even better if you like. We are, we've worked hard to make sure that any rooms that were inaccessible are accessible. The, the only issue really is the basement has never been made handicapped accessible and we haven't done any work on that yet. That's not to say we might not in the future. It's just a, a problem. But there are bathrooms upstairs, you know, all the kitchen and the bar and everything. About the stage. And the stage, yes. Yes, there is a ramp to the side of the stage that uh, can be accessed. There are lots of other comments, which, um, you know, I hope you can, and Kimberly perhaps can go through at some point. Um, I, will get a, I will get a uh, text of all of the chat stuff from the recording and I can share it with Lizzie. Great, because there's some recommendations for, um, you know, a couple different things and performers and uh, lighting, yeah. lighting. Kim, what, do, what would you like to say about your last 18 months? Oh, well, it's been, it's been a whirlwind. I mean, when I say I blinked and it, there's something new every day and I've learned a lot from you um it's it's something i never thought i'd learn about mold remediation or dealing with electricians but um you had a lot of confidence in me and thought i can <laughs> wrangle them and i'm doing the best that i can and uh it, it's a labor of love because i am from bearsville i grew up there i'm not you know i'm in uptown kingston now but I, you know, was born and raised in the 60s and 70s in that area, and I played on the Sawkill, Hill, and it's, it's very important, and I know how important it is to the community. So um, we're, we're trying to get it right. We're trying to make as, you know, as much of a difference as we can. We had, um, we had you know, the most wonderful neighbor in Sally Grossman, because I don't think she ever really thought that she'd sold it. It was kind of still... She was very involved in it and she wanted it to be as good as it could be. And I, I said to her the first time I met her, Sally, I'd love you to, I'd love to celebrate your contribution to this. You finished it off. You took three years and you finished off. And then you went and ran the recording studios. And uh, she said, I want no credit at all. It's all about Albert and Albert's vision. So I don't want anything to do with it. But then she, uh, <laughs> she sent me two emails a week telling me how we had to get it right. And uh, that was great. You know, I mean, sometimes it was painful, but most of the time I, I felt it came from her heart and she wanted us to just preserve the memory and preserve Albert's vision. So um, I, she, my biggest regret is that she never came into the theater after we finished it. I kept asking her to, and for some reason she just, um, but I did show her some photographs of it. And then of course she sadly passed away uh, about five weeks ago. Um, but I am now that she's passed, and go against her wishes and put up a tribute to her in the lounge because you know I, I really feel like um, you know like this work that we've just done is not my work or my money it's 50 people 50 crafts people in many senses you know whether they're carpenters or people that are making curtains and drapes um, or even those stonemasons digging up the garden you know that they are really great people and it was a real team effort and and in fact now the team is going to pass from those people to you guys you know it's going to pass now getting it up and running and making it successful is going to come down to how much the community supports it and how much we listen to the community 
So uh, we're going through site plan review at the moment, and it's a very interesting process to understand the basics that a town would say. A town would say, you've got to have good exits and entrances onto the highway. You've got to have good lighting, but it's not going to be so bright that it upsets the neighbours. You've got to have um, signage so people can find their way around. Well, of course you have. It's a it's a 15 acre lot. So um, we are learning a lot about that, aren't we, Kim? We're, we're yeah. constantly surprised by something else that we'd forgotten about that we're yeah. having to learn about. But once we've once we've got it, we'll get it right. So uh, there's a lot going on up there. You're all very welcome to come and have a wander around. Um, we hope to open at Memorial Weekend with the tavern. We've, we've got a lot to do, so keep your fingers crossed. And we are having the Restless Age are going to be performing on the stage on the 21st of May, uh, followed by, um, I can't even remember, just another, another couple of small concerts. And then right now, uh, the music industry is coming awake and beginning to plan tours and we want to start bringing in some of the bigger acts that should come to back to Bearsville and, and new acts to come to Bearsville. I really believe that maybe this, the key to what we should be doing this year is bluegrass music because bluegrass music both matches the, the love of older musicians that are in the town that are, love Catskill music and the younger musicians that are down in Brooklyn that are coming up here at the weekends and looking for authenticity, they love, they love bluegrass too. So we are planning on some bluegrass barbecues, um, if we can, uh, this summer. And on Sunday, we're going to do something that we did last year uh, very successfully, which was a Sunday jazz brunch. Um, with some. We have fantastic jazz musicians in Woodstock. You probably know that. We have the wonderful international jazz composer, Carla Blay, living in Grog Hill, up, uh, up 212. We have Sonny Rollins living here. We had Charlie Mingus living here. And of course, we've got the cre Creative Music Studio. Um, had Pat Matheny, we've got Jack DeJohnette. So, so jazz Sundays, Americana Saturdays, and lots of other things in between. Wow. I'm sorry. I can't read your chat. I'm so sorry. I don't have it on my screen. Maybe I can. I think that's it for the questions. So Leslie, I don't know if we want to turn it back to you or. I had a question. I had one more. Can I ask my question? Yeah. Um, I, I apologize for being late to this one, your wonderful presentation and I loved every minute of it. Did you touch on how you got started with this project? In your presentation, I did I? I okay, I was I'll get it from somebody else. Talking about okay. buying it, and then I didn't, and then eight days before the auction, I changed my mind, and then we had a mad, crazy panic, <laughs> and then we got it the day before the auction. <laughs> but what got you to even the auction? I mean, because I just loved it. But I, I, I um, Judy mentioned at the beginning that after I sold my um, organic food company, I came to Florida and created a um, what's called the Historic Green Village in Anna Maria. And that's a combination of old buildings that we moved from elsewhere in the, in the city uh, onto this piece of land and old buildings that were already there. And then we built one new one. And every one of those buildings is 100% uh, solar powered with photovoltaics and solar hot water. And we use ground source heat pumps to drive the air conditioning. So, and it's, it's his, both historic and green. And I love that idea of recycling a whole building and using it for maybe a new purpose, but certainly not just knocking it down and building nice and new. And so I suppose I looked at Bearsville and thought, hmm, yeah, we could do something interesting with that. But it, it's a bit bigger than <laughs> the green village in Santa Maria. And it was a, we didn't have time to get inspections and surveys done, so it was a, a little surprising. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, somebody said, what's the capacity? Well, we can have uh, 320 people seated in the auditorium and the balcony, and then another 40 or 50 people seated in the lounge. Or for a standing room event, we can have 500 plus, uh, but we probably would keep it to 500 because we want it to be comfortable. 
and yes, we have all the fire exits and everything else to keep it to keep it safe. Now, what I tell you, one thing that would be really useful to Kim and I right now um, I so. would be if any of you have any photographs of events that you went to, both outside in the garden and inside in in the lounge or the auditorium, or even weddings, that sort of thing. We would love to have that because we're trying to make a a wall of history that it's not about famous people. It's actually about people, the people of Woodstock using the Bearsville Theatre. So if anybody has anything at all, you can, if you're willing to share them, you can email them to me directly and, and uh, we'd love to see them. We're always looking for fresh ideas or, you know, rehash old ideas, but they come from the pictures. Yes, yes. And somebody's asked how they can help. Well, um, because we, we don't expect the theater to ever make money, uh, we don't have a lot of money to um, pay for ushers and things like that. So if anybody would like to volunteer and become a friend of Bearsville and get in to see the concerts for free, but also be part of the staff that are showing people around on the night, then we would welcome that. We'd welcome having a group of people that we can train uh, to be friends of Bearsville Theatre and, uh, and be part of what we do. I'm seeing about lighting. Yes, we are being very careful with our lighting. Yes. Yes. Okay. And yes, I mean, one of the things I did want to say is I'm very um, politically conscious, I guess you'd say. I was a bit of a Labour Party supporter over in England. And uh, I would really love the theatre to be a place where all different groups can use it. Um, you know, whether we're talking about the um, LGBTQ community or environmental community or women's groups or yoga and meditation groups. To me, it's it's your space uh, and we'll, we'll make it work so that the rates that people pay are very low or as low as we can make it. Um, but also, you know, political coming togethers, whether we're campaigning for things or just want to get together and talk about things. We have a great green room downstairs uh, with sofas and chairs. So it's perfect for debate groups or singing groups, sewing groups, <laughs> you know, all the kind of things that you can do in a community. I'd love it to be used like that. And uh, we, uh, we do do tours. Um, we, we just have to get the coronavirus numbers sorted so that we can do it this summer. But I would really like to do tours and show everybody all the different spaces. But we can do it one-on-one one -on -one right now. Anyone else have any questions? Is uh, Little Bear going to be continue to be Chinese? Molly's been there forever, hasn't she? So <laughs> she's had a few struggles this last year, but she's she's still there. Uh, oh, I, let me ask you one last question because this is just a bit of a, a poll. Um, oh, we've been asked what our policy is about allowing people into the theater. And um, it seems to me that we should be saying that uh, we'd welcome you to the theatre under every circumstance, but under these circumstances, we would like you to have had a vaccination, to have both shots or the single shot vaccination two weeks ago. And uh, you could show us your vaccination card or your, uh, there is an app now that you can get on your phone that I think Judy has called Excelsior. Um, and if you haven't had your vaccination, we can, I take you to one side and give you the the 10 minute test um, before allowing you into the theater it just seems to me that if we are going to have events where people can mill around and get close to each other even if they don't want to um, it'll never be crowded with only 100 people in it but it, I, I do not want Bearsville to become somewhere where people catch coronavirus so are you comfortable with that as a policy is anybody not comfortable with that? Because I'd, I'd like to be able to address their concerns and, or at least to think about what they think we ought to do instead. Right, well, I take it that you like it then. <laughs> Get in touch if you don't. Um, my email is lizzie, L-I-Z-Z-I-E, at bearsvillecenter, T-E-R, 
kim.com at the end. I should have put it on the end of the presentations. And Kim is the same, Kim, K-I-M, at bearsvillecenter.com. And uh, we're there every day. So uh, get in touch, come and see it. And, uh, and certainly I hope to see you there at some point in the future. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie. That was wonderful. You're very welcome. Oh. <laughs> and Kim, too. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Kristen? Great. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie. Um, I hope this is the beginning of a great relationship between the Ulster County Women's Network and the Bearsville Complex. So thank you very much. We can't wait to uh, become regular patrons. Um, and thank you, Judy, for coordinating this. Really appreciate it. Uh, just briefly, I want to talk to you about uh, the May 11th event, which will feature author Randy Hobler, who will be discussing his book, 101 Arabian Tales. And just to quote a bit from the book's description, uh, where else can you absorb an entire country through the eyes of 101 people in an uber memoir of a Woodstock generation of Peace Corps volunteers thrust across the vast sands of Libya? How else can you immerse yourself in the riveting challenges, triumphs, hilarities, and poignancies experienced by this mix of dedicated English teachers from every corner of America? 101 Arabian Tales is an amazingly detailed chronicle of anecdotes, historical perspectives, fun, adventure, and hardship. So we're really pleased to have Randy Hobler joining us and thanks to Susan Metzger for organizing that event. He's a great speaker. He is, he is just, he is just, he's really fun to listen to. So anybody who comes will enjoy it. Great, great, thank you. And just briefly, I wanna mention that we are gonna be reinstating our scholarship program this year. So we'll be making a grant to a young Ulster County woman and uh, working on the criteria and details and they'll be coming out soon. So stay tuned. So thank you, I'll turn it back to Leslie. Great, thank you. Thank you for the whole board of Judy for your Zoom skills and Lizzie of course and Kristen. And uh, thank you so much for that that informative presentation. I'm sure everyone here is excited and we're all ready to sign up to be volunteers. We want you to succeed and we want to help you to succeed because it's going to be a wonderful space and they'll just be clamoring to get here from everywhere else. So thank you so much. And in gratitude, we'd like to offer you a one year membership to Ulster County Women's Network. We hope you will join us again if you can have some time. And I want to thank everyone else for uh, your support of Los County Women's Network. Remember, to uh, all the members and so many new members, add your bio and your photo to the directory so <laughs> members can find you. And don't forget to support our business partners. And then, till next time, please know that we are here for you. And don't forget that this too shall pass. We are perhaps planning some face-to-face -face event in July. It's in the uh, just talking phase, but uh, we will keep you informed. Watch out for the next newsletter. It's great to see everyone here. Thank you so much, Lizzie, everyone else. Thank you. Thanks, Lizzie. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Leslie. Bye now. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.